Good morning and welcome to episode 12 of the Julia the Knitter podcast. This is a podcast mainly about knitting and there's some sewing and other crafty endeavors. Uh, we are coming to you live from Queens, New York, where we live with my handsome husband, two crazy kids, and our wild beast of a dog. And as you see today, we have a special guest. Hello, I'm Emma and I love to draw. Yeah, this is my daughter Emma and she's going to be joining us on the podcast today. We are recording nothing nothing is as it usually is around here lately i feel like so we're not recording on our regular day or at a regular time that's just the way life goes so so there's something that i wanted to say and it's, it's i'm drawing a blank so i'm just gonna dive right into our projects okay okay does that work for you yep okay so, I am so excited that I can finally, finally talk about the sweater that I knit just after Christmas. I've alluded to it in earlier episodes. Uh, this was a test knit that I was working on for the Breeze publication that just came out by Making Stories. I think it just was released yesterday. But this is the Coromuel, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, C-O-R-O-M-U-E-L sweater. Okay, it is a fingering weight sweater that is knit up. I used Ginger Twist Studios, Ginger's Hand Dyed Masha Mayhem 4-ply is the yarn. And it is a BFL Masham combo. And it's so soft and squishy. Give that a... Ooh. It feels really nice. Emma was just telling me how much she loves the sweater before we started recording. Um... It's a mostly stockinette, raglan, top-down sweater. And it's just got this nice little lace detail in the raglan increases, and then it goes down the side. And it, it's got a three-quarter sleeve. And to me, that's like the perfect length of a sleeve because I'm not always pushing my sleeve length, my sleeve up. Is that the sweater that gave you a hard time with the sleeves? Where you had to like sew like the, this part, the curves, I think you... No, I don't think so. I'm not sure. I remember having a few issues with the way the short rows were in the collar, mm -hmm. uh, though just the way it was written. Um, so I'd be curious to see if in the final pattern they fixed that. But, guys, go get a copy of this book. If you haven't pre-ordered it or ordered it, they're not paying me. I wish they would, but they're not paying me to say any of this stuff. It was just such a lovely pattern to knit and there's it's just a whole collection of really just beautiful stuff so here's the sweater once again I would wear it and model it for you guys but you know what it's like 150 degrees in Queens actually no it's not 150 degrees today it's actually cooled off a little bit it's only in the 70s I think today which mm. is so nice because it feels like summer has finally come to New York even though it's a little early for summer for me we had we had winter, 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 a day of spring and summer. That's what the weather's been like here, right? Yeah. It, it's just been crazy. <laughs> We've been sweating. I've been looking for dinners where we don't have to put the oven on. That's the kind of week we've been having. So, so that's that. Um, I did finish up a, another test knit. Mm -hmm. I can't talk too much about it because the pattern's not released yet. I can give you a little teaser. I have it knit and blocked. Once my socks, it's a pair of socks, and it's the first pattern released by Hannah Lisa of Hannah on the Road podcast. Um, she, I knit the first sock, and I noticed the foot was a little small, and by the time I went to go knit the second sock, I noticed that changes have been made with where you start the increases. It's a toe-up sock, and that sock fits much better. So I'm going to have to go back and I think knit a third sock so that I have <laughs> socks that are the a same third size. Sock? A third sock? Because... See if I can do this. The, the feet on my sock are not quite the same size. They're they're on blockers, so it's hard to tell. But my heel flap gusset is here. I'm trying to do this out without showing. It's it's ending here on this sock. So it's it's got like an inch or two difference, and it's that's just not gonna fly. It's not gonna be comfortable. I was actually tempted if they didn't change it to just knit them both up the same way and give them to you. But then I said, no way, Jose. <laughs> they fix it. Good. It's my size. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this yarn. This yarn is 
by Oysters and Pearls. And Ooh. she is actually really local to us. She is a dyer from Astoria, Queens. Which knitter do we give the yarn to at the Rhinebeck Festival? Oh, they're upstate. Uh, they're upstate. Um, no, but this woman, she actually lives right here in Queens, too. And she does all naturally dyed yarns, and her yarns are just gorgeous. This particular yarn is a 100% Targi Columbia wool. There's no linal on, no superwash, anything. It's minimally processed and botanically hand dyed. Um, this is, it's a, I would say it's about a sport weight. And this is in her Wild Ones collection. It was hue number two. Ooh. She did a few that were like varying shades of this pink. Some were a little lighter, some were a little darker. And it's just this nice little, um, like a peachy pink. I really like it. The pattern itself is a toe up sock with a heel flap and gusset. And it's got a really nice wrap stitch pattern that I've never seen anything like that. Um, I'll stitch. show you here below the camera. See, like, you wrap yarn around this stitch. Normally, it, it looks, if you're not looking closely, it looks like it's a cable design. Um, oh, yeah, I kind of do. But it's, it's really pretty. I really enjoy knitting on it. And, and since it was a sport weight sock, which is a little bit thicker than the socks I normally knit up, um, it, it just, like, it knit really quickly. <laughs> they were done so fast. Um, normally, the socks that you are knitting normally take about two months or... Uh, or a little less. Usually about two weeks. I mean, lately, since I've been back to work, I don't have anywhere near as much knitting time, so maybe it takes me a little longer. Um, but normally about two weeks. Great. Um, seems really long. Sometimes. This is actually, uh, I mean, in the middle of this sock, this sock took a little longer than I expected it to because life has just been so crazy around here lately. Um, I know the last time we spoke, I told you I was just getting over this horrific cold. It was all right, so bad. and that is basically all the finished objects that I have to talk about for you guys today. I have started a new knitting project. Yeah, <laughs> I've got I've got my son is here in the background. Mommy? Yes. Tractor. 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 Okay. Um, I'm knitting this pattern by Maria Monska of the Stitch in Sweden podcast, and it's a little cardigan sweater. Can you just push your chair in a little bit so he can get by? Called the Little Hearts Yoked Colorwork Cardigan. And it looks like this. And it's a bottom up cardigan. It's got this nice little colorwork heart yoke. And sorry, we have another one joining us. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah, okay, there we go. It's a family affair today. <laughs> That's just the way it goes. Um, I'm almost Adela? done with the sleeves of this cardigan. Adela. Now you see Dharma's pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm knitting the main body in this really gorgeous color. I believe it's, nah, I forget what the yarn is. Let me get my yarn tags. This one is Frolicking Feet. In their Sailing Horizon colorway. It's 100% domestic superwash from Reno. And it's just this whitish color, creamy color with purples, light purples, dark purples, blue purple, purples, little bits of pink, really light like blush pink. Sometimes there's a little pop of yellow in there. It reminded me of like springtime flowers, like crocuses and irises. And I, I went in to buy it right yeah. in the middle of when it's this, this um, crazy weather we've been having. And actually, funny story about it. So the Long Island Yarn Crawl was a week or two ago. The what? The Long Island Mommy? Yarn Crawl. So there's a bunch of yarn stores around Long Island and they all participate and you can, Ooh, if you go to each one you can enter to win a prize. And they have different Ooh. deals and specials and stuff like that. Um, one of these stores is right down the street from where I work. How dangerous is that? Huh? That's dangerous. Um, Why is it dangerous? Because I could go there every day and spend all my money. <laughs> so, so I went in there just to, you know, I, I wanted to check it out and it sounded like such a good excuse to go check it out and it was 
the Knitting Cove in Port Jefferson. It's just the sweetest little yarn shop. The owner is so nice, and I really enjoyed meeting her. And they have a lovely selection of different kinds of yarns. And so I bought... Uh, Hi. Thank you for showing everybody your waffles. Uh, so this is the main color. It's got all these little purples and pinks and yellows and all kinds of nice stuff in there. And the contrasting color that I'm going to do the hearts in is this Whoa. gorgeous pink. It's like a salmon-y... I don't want to say salmon. I don't know. It's a cross between like a salmon color and a bubblegum pink. Hmm. But it is by Eric Arocania a big? Yarns. Huasco a is a hand-painted pure extra fine merino wool. It's 100% wool. Um, I don't know if Huasco is the colorway or the yarn base. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but it's beautiful and it's really soft. And what do you think of that color? Uh, I like it. Something about these two colors together yeah. just I really liked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks pretty together. Poo. <laughs> Poo. Poo. <laughs> All right. So that's that's. With the way life has been going lately, it's just been so hectic that. Poo. That's really all the knitting that I have on my needles. Um. And I haven't even been getting much of that done. So, I do have some sewing plans. I know I've been talking about them a little bit before, um, but my fabric. I finally decided on fabric and it finally arrived. And I am going to be sewing up the Leela and June sweetheart Spring dress. dress. I printed out a picture of the dress so this way you guys could all see it because I am not as tech savvy to be inserting pictures into the middle of this podcast but you can see how it works it's got a nice little halter top and a big full uh gathered skirt i haven't decided whether i'm going to do the gathered skirt or there's a variation for a circle skirt and it would have like a smooth uh transition from the bodice to the skirt i haven't decided but i wanted to sew this up in a very nice fabric i got this faux Dupani. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, fabric. And it's kind of, it's got a nice little sheen to it. And it's like this Tiffany blue. And it's, yummy, yummy. it looks very, very fancy. And I think it'll be good for dancing all night in. Yes. That's, that's my plan. I think it's a nice, it's a lightweight fabric, but it's not sheer, which I was worried that it might be. It looks like a good fabric before you dress for Uncle Mikey's wedding. I think it'll be nice. What do you think, Dermot? Don't get any syrup on it. <laughs> yeah, do you think Mommy will look nice in that dress? <laughs> I have to make it into a dress. I can't put the dress on yet. It's not made. It's just it's just fabric for now. But those are my, my plans, my current crafting plans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I said those are your plans too? Do you have any plans, Dermot? Yeah. Yeah, what are your plans? I share. You're gonna share? You gonna help mommy sew the dress? In the back. In the back? Dermot. Dermot. In the chair. In the chair. Okay. Um, now Emma, chair. I know Emma here has, she is a budding entrepreneur. And what? A budding entrepreneur, a businesswoman. Oh, oh yes, I am. So Emma and her friends from school have created their own little business, and she was going to tell you guys a little bit about it. Uh, me and all of my friends at school have created a bookworm bookmarks and more paper company, and we sell bookmarks, fortune tellers, and basically everything okay. made out of paper. And... Is that? Um... You can okay, buy you to any bookmarks or envelopes or paper airplanes Fuck. or fortune tellers and we also no, have bookmark collections which are um, basically bookmarks that are in a pack and there's all different kinds of designs on them. And one of our collections is a Harry Potter collection. 
And that's one of your favorite books at the moment, right? You've been really yeah. enjoying that series? Yep. Okay. Now, do you, with the Harry Potter collection, do you go by a certain character? So you do you go more, more by the houses, like Gryffindor versus Ravenclaw, mm -hmm. or Slytherin, or... No! Hufflepuff. Do you have a specific no. theme? No! Uh, no! So the theme for the Harry Potter collection is no. basically... No! <laughs> is basically just any random design for Harry Potter no. that we look for. And, no! No! <laughs> um, some of the bookmarks in that collection are no. the Hogwarts crest. No! Um, Harry on his firebolt trying to catch a snitch. And we have also, um, you get down? well, one of our friends has made a bookmark for us, and it is a Harry Potter bookmark. And it's just Harry Potter's face with Gryffindor hat, jacket and a scarf stuck. and what are you doing? it is very cool I'm stuck. Mommy? yes um, i'm stuck and also oh, all okay, the collections okay. are for 75 cents and then the fortune tellers are I think, um i'm going to say 20 cents because they're not very hard to make, and we can make them probably in about a couple minutes. And we normally base the prices Welcome. on how hard it is to make the product or on how long it takes hmm. to make. Sounds very good. Yep. I think your your school is very lucky to have a, a, such a nice little business going on. A lot of people have ordered bookmarks. So okay, far. cool. And I'm also thinking of making books. Um, I have a lot of plans for books in here. Um, <laughs> Emma is a very good writer. Yep. I've written Mom. a lot of stories How? in my journals. In my so, How? the first book that I am making. Um, I have made it um, a while ago, but it was a book about volcanoes, and I have not started writing it yet, but I have planned it. And right now I am writing a book for you, and it is a mystery book. I can't wait to read it. I've been waiting for my since my birthday. Yep. <laughs> um, but the next book that I plan to make after I finally finish the mystery book. Sorry for the the ambient is, noise. <laughs> is a book called A Winkle in Time, and it's going to be about Rip Van Winkle, and this is back cover. Mm -hmm. Die. And. It's going to be um, kind of the same title as Wrinkle in Time, but only because I know that Rip Van Winkle kind of time traveled, but not really. I don't remember. I remember he fell asleep for a thousand years or a hundred yeah. years. And that's how he kind of tri time traveled. Oh. Because okay. he fell asleep, and then he woke up a thousand years later. Oh, interesting. Yes. Although I don't know the full story. So you have to look it up. Was this inspired by the Van Winkle Bridge? Yes. When we go upstate to visit my parents, depending on the way we go, sometimes we cross Dermot. over. <laughs> Mommy and Dermot. Sometimes we cross over the Rip Van Winkle Bridge. And we usually talk about the story a little bit. As much of it as I can remember, which the details escape me. Daddy? Daddy's at work. Black seat. Yes, I have the car seat here. It's here. It's here. <laughs> and I actually oh. came up with the idea for the book in the car ride upstate when we were going across the Rip Van Winkle Bridge. Mm. I think it was the last time we went upstate. Okay. The back seat. Very good. The back seat. 
a duck seat. Okay. Um, but anyway, I also seat. have another book that I am seat. planning to make. Dermot is telling you that the car seat is right here, just in case you are curious. Car <laughs> seat. A book seat. Um, seat. So this is the front cover of what I am planning to make <laughs> the second uh, my next book or after the uh, Rip Van Winkle book. This book is called The Hogwarts Height mm. and it's going to be about uh, robbers stealing like all potions and stuff from Hogwarts. Oh no. And You're helping. Harry, Hermione, and Ron have to figure out who did it. And that sounds very interesting. Yep. I also have one more book that I would like to talk about. Okay. And it's called The Avada Kedavra Assault. Ooh. And it's going to be about a magician. Mmm. And that's the front cover. Again. Beautiful. And that's all the books. I think that sounds excellent. It sounds like you've got your work cut out for you over the next uh, bit of time. Yep. I don't know what that is. Thank you. That is. Yes, okay. Um, and then just watch that because you got a little cheese there. I don't want you guys to end up looking at it. Uh, and that is about all we've got for you guys today. So I hope you enjoyed what you see. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date with all new episodes. Yep. And we should be back again in another week or two for more crafting goodness. So have a great weekend. Enjoy the weather. I hope it's gorgeous where you are because we have a gorgeous weekend ahead of us. Yep. And and don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to like the video. <laughs> Bye. Bye.